up safety, just to review. A couple different safeties on our fend hook robot. We got the manual each stop. Got the safety on the door when you open it. And then you have a dual chain safety, a DCS they call it, for uh, a software safety that we can set up to give us even more protection, a third layer of it, if you will. Um, today, we're going to start out with parts of the robot, and then we're going to get into jogging. The controller, the heart of the CPU, now, I know it's hard to see right now, I'll have you come up in a few minutes, is basically where you turn the power on to your robot, what I have up here. I know we're in a lab, as you know we have another fan hook, three ADVs in the depth. Doesn't matter, a robot, you always have a controller, Mi manipulator, is the actual robot itself. I always like to look at it as an arm. You can just imagine taking that base and putting it here. Basically an arm, a human arm. The end effector, sometimes they call it EOAT, end of arm tooling. It could be a gripper. In this case, ours here that I have right here is a gripper. Or it could be it would be easier if I brought that over. Or it could be a tool, like for welding, spraying, paint. Those kinds of applications. Power supply, in most cases, are inside the controller. As you guys know, again, from being over in our other lab, the ADEPT robot is the only one that has a separate power supply. Power supply in our fan up here, LR mate, is 110, just a wall outlet, that makes it very handy. Most industrial robots are three phase, 480, sometimes 240. It means a programming. Programming you guys have been doing from your, just your introduction part was on the teach pendant. We're also going to do an offline programming. What do you think the advantage of an offline programming would be? Any ideas, Seth? Possibly then you would be kind of dangerous. Yeah. Like you would be possibly, I mean, uh, that's not the main advantage. You do it from the comfort of your home. Yeah, you can do it from the comfort of your home. You don't have to take your you can let the machine run in while you're programming it. Here, when you're using the teach pendant, obviously you're going to have to shut the machine down. So if you're if you do offline programming, you could be doing whatever production run it's doing, and be down less time when you finally download or up, or upload the program to the robot control. So good. Flip the slide here. So Finnick likes to break, there, break down four components here. You already talked about the mechanical unit. We'll get a little bit more into the mechanical unit. Software, the controller, which you already know the controller is. Peripheral equipment. What's peripheral mean? You know, what, what would that be, Gary? Peripheral uh, anything that's not part of the main system, I guess. Like actually yeah, system. very good. Um, Anything that's not part of the main system, it could be a uh, power supply for welding device, get a big welder on it, uh, yeah, any accessory really. Again, I think you guys re realize the mechanical unit, is, uh, mechanical unit is basically the robot itself. Here we see Axis 1. What's another name for Axis 1? Base. Yeah, that's our base, isn't it? What's 
another name for axis two. So that would be the shoulder. Shoulder, okay. And I know you, you probably see it coming, axis three. Elbow. Elbow, yeah, so base, shoulder, elbow. Those three axes are your major axes. They basically determine your work envelope. Okay, as you can imagine, jogging this around. Again, I guess again, I'll just say again, it, it determines your work envelope. Where the other three axes, four, five, and six, are more for control of your tool or gripper, depending. <coughs> on what you're using for. So four, what would that be? Ashton, what, you know another name for four? Would that be this? Wrist. Not quite, because look, I'm doing the whole arm thing. Mm -hmm. So that'd be roll, mm -hmm. okay? Consider that wrist. That's extension. Extension. Okay. And then this is just the wrist, the end of the wrist going like this. Now I know some of you've seen it already. Do you remember? And we're gonna have a slide on it, but while we're here, what air can we get when we have the wrist straight out like this with the arm. Did anybody run into that area? It might have been the other class. I think it might have been the other class. Singularity, they call it. Okay. What happens is if you're if you're uh, not rolling the frame, what happens is they don't know whether to turn the wrist or this in the calculation when you uh, do a single uh, cycle through. So it would come up with singularity here. And that is not just on FANUC robots. You'll see that on the ABBs also. Probably Moto Man or any other company. Before I go any further, do you, know, you remember what this robot could sometimes is called? It's a spider. Yeah, a spider. Remember I showed you a but, yeah, the, yeah, the video clip of it from Fanic out in um, Michigan, where it was picking up, I guess they were pills, different colored pills, how fast it could move. I already mentioned the major axis, J1, J2, J3. The, mi the minor axis, obviously, then would be J4, J5, and J6. The EOAT, again, that stands for end of arm tooling. There's some stuff you guys being in electronics would hopefully make some sense to you, and I know you can wait for some appointments. So each axis motor, driven by an AC servo motor, 200 volts AC. All serial pulse motors will be positioned. Basically, the motors are not customer serviceable. What's inside those motors is a brake, and the brake is always on until you push that dead man in. As long as there's no errors and you push that dead man in, it releases the brakes so you'll be able to jog it. Okay, so the motors will keep it up right at that point, obviously. So as soon as that dead man goes out, the brakes are on. Sort of reminds me of like brake shoes on a car, but just in the opposite fashion. That makes sense, that, that makes sense. they're drum brakes, I should say. They're out against And one 
one thing it says here, it's not a big deal to remember this, but this is a big deal. On the Phenux, you can damage the robot if you didn't lubricate it correctly. On the welding Phenux robot that we saw over there, the seals are, are pretty, I want to say, fragile on it in the respect. If you put too much pressure with a regular grease gun that you're used to, it'll blow the seals. You have to we use a like a hospital syringe and special grease to uh, lubricate that machine. As far as this machine, I, I believe these, we never went over that in the classes out at Nook. I, I, I didn't have a main class, but I think they're pretty much sealed where you don't have to lubricate it at all. Uh, yeah, I thought this is interesting here. Brake failure is typically due to lack of current at the brake rather than failure of the brake itself. Um, be interesting to see why they would have a lack of current there. It may be a faulty board. I'm not sure. That would be something I'd like to talk to one of their technicians about. But on the ABB robots, no different over there. The, the big one, who was on? Who was working on the big 2400 ABB? Remember to talk about it, if you get it over too far, it starts drifting. And basically, you don't just replace the brake, you gotta replace the whole motor. Uh, and to, to do that on there, you need a, a forklift or overhead crane or something to hold, keep that held up while you take that out. Okay, this slide is breaking down the software a little more, tell you more about it. You probably already imagine it contains the operating system, the programs that you make up or save to the in the software and the control. It has diagnostics and faults. User defined data. Frame, system variables, IO configuration. Uh, the IO that we use mostly on the FANUC is uh, the gripper open and closed. On the ABBs, we're gonna be <coughs> using it for vices and such. Towards the end of the semester, we'll get into frames. Frames, right now, all of you guys are mainly in what frame, you remember? The world, I believe the world frame for FANUC, okay? Basically, that's the default frame meaning the robot always knows what if you don't have if you didn't choose a frame it always defaults the world and um, we'll see a slide here in a couple minutes to show you what what that really looks like according to Cartesian wise yeah basically for us for our lingo the controller is basically your CPU the servo amplifier is the what for the AC, AC servo motor out of servo amplifier. Communication software, I mean hardware, excuse me. What would that be, do you think? What do we do to use communications on anything anymore? No ports. Uh, you know what? A lot of these don't even have COM ports. That used to be the COM one. But so what, what's the next step above the COM port? What's that? This is VGA. So. Well, that's a, that's a video. Yeah, okay, Ethernet. Ethernet, right? Yeah, Ethernet. Yeah. And now both, a lot of them, I believe this one does too, has a, you can get a, have its own TC IP address. I know it does actually, and you can, but you're still going through an Ethernet cable. Even a lot of the CNC mills and legs over it. Not the ones that we have, we'll most of them are gone Ethernet anymore. And of course, the controller interfaces with the work cell. Like where the one robot over here used to be interfaced with a CNC mill, and the other one with a CNC lathe. And then they have external, or they call them sometimes, some of them call them customer e stop connections. That's where our light curtains are hooked to. Um, you can hook them internally. If you don't hook it external, our customer e stop, like for instance, the Fanuc trainer we have here in this car, they would have a wire loop inside that controller. So obviously, to 
completes the circuit and it thinks there's no problem. But if we would ever go anything more to that, we would take that wire out and then use our series loop for our external e stop. Okay, we already talked about peripheral equipment a little bit. Any item that's not part of the mechanical unit or controller. Some of you already have experience on this control. Some of you don't, and that's fine, because you everyone will get to use it. This teach pendant is a little bit different than the one over in the Cal 140. This one has has an eye accurate. The eye basically means it's also a touch screen. You can do everything on this touch screen too. How many position dead man switches this, Andrew? Do you remember? Two. Good try, but no. Three. three. What's the difference between three and two? Do you remember that? <clears throat> if, uh, if the robot or anything hits you uh, and you grip it hard enough, It'll also uh, press the e-stop. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, like it hit in the back while I'm jogging. Most times, as humans, we have a tendency to grab harder. That will stop it. That will stop it also. Again, teach pen has a regular e-stop. Maintain the e-stop, if you will. Uh, basically, get to turn teach pen on. Put your dead man into the center position, reset a couple times. When we're jogging this around, who, who used a fan that can hear Seth? I have to use two hands, don't I, when I jog it? Do you remember what keys do I have to press to? You have to hold down shift and then the key that you want it, like the X or the Y coordinate keys to shift it to the direction. Yeah, very good. You didn't hear Seth, basically I have to hold shift down and then I can press the directions I want to jog it. One nice thing I like about FANIC control or teach pendant over ABB, you guys on ABB, you know that they have a joystick and you you gotta be very aware of your jog or your frame or your the Cartesian system. Uh, one nice thing about Again, uh, FANIC, it's easy to see X minus, X plus, Y minus, Y plus. It's, I think it, it gives you a little bit more control in that security, being able to do it that way. But again, it ties two hands up that, that's on purpose. That way, I don't have my hand over here in the gripper and screw them with it, and then I somehow hurt myself by jogging with one hand. Again, just another, here's just a slide from Funna. This is of an older model. Pretty much had most of the capabilities as the one I had just showed you. This is the one we have in welding. But again, you have to hold the uh, shift key down and use your other hand to do the jogging. Turn on that controller. It's sort of like turning on a computer. You know, booting up initializes the system variables. Any changes that you might get in IO. When you change, like the output to the gripper in them, it tells you to turn it off and back on, so it records the changes. Nice hint screen. Uh, I guess in the code start only. Executes a command file program, okay, 
So this last bullet, you probably think is common sense, and it should be, but when we get in a hurry, sometimes common sense doesn't come into play. So I would like to make sure the robot's not in a position where there's not much you're going to do to get to turn the power on anyhow, but if it's close to the camera or something like that, I obviously want to be aware of that. For a dog, make sure the cords are not a uh, chirping hazard, and then you know, you can't see it on the camera, but my power switch is down here, my controls in the box, and obviously I want to just turn it to on, which I will. Okay. Let it boot up. And it's sort of like booting up a computer. It's probably faster than booting up some of our computers, right? As soon as you boot it up, you're always going to have a fall. So, and make sure both have these stuff on the controller and on the pendant. Make sure they're both clear. I'm going to hold my dead man in the center position. I'm going to hit reset. And now I have no red up here. I know I'm ready to jog. I hold, again, hold shift key down. See, I'm going X plus, just going towards the screen, X minus, away. I'm keeping it at 10% right there. You always want to jog slow until you get real comfortable with what you're doing. Then you can speed up a little bit. Y plus, Y minus. Again, you will, you will get time to do this um, with the labs. All right, it, it gives a little better explanation. You go step by step. All right, I think that's a good place to end, and we'll, we'll start. We'll go over to the lab and start working on it.